Over the past decade, the UK and indeed the world has seen an explosion in gambling and certainly in gambling promotion, be that through bricks and mortar premises such as bookmakers and casinos, or more prolifically, uh, online gambling services such as online bookmakers and online casinos. In parallel to this, we have seen uh, an uprising and an increase in responsible gambling messaging. Things such as only gamble what you can afford to lose, and probably the most common, when the fun stops, stop, which is present in the vast majority of online and TV gambling adverts. In this video, I want to explore what I believe to be potentially a, an underlying ulterior motive and evil psychology behind the very messages that are purporting to protect us from developing what I believe to be one of the most dangerous and harmful addictions, gambling addiction. I hope you're all doing all right. I hope you're keeping safe and I hope you're keeping safe. And as that intro would purport, what I want to talk about today is responsible gambling messaging and how I believe that consciously or subconsciously, although I do fear it's more likely to be consciously, there is an ulterior motive to this promotion of or deemed promotion of responsible and safe betting, responsible and safe gambling. The most common message we hear a lot is when the fun stops, stops, and I'm going to come on to that uh, very shortly. Um, firstly, I want to talk about a couple of other ones. Um, firstly, be gamble aware. Now, I'm very aware that gamble aware themselves are an organisation that help people uh, identify and get help for gambling addiction. So I'm not speaking specifically about the organization, more about the phrasing that we see in gambling promotion. Be gamble aware. Basically, be aware of what you're doing whilst you're gambling. Maintain consciousness, so to speak, of your behavior. And on paper, that sounds very, very sensible, doesn't it? However, I can be gamble aware in the same way that I can be drink aware. I can be very aware that I've drunk half a bottle of scotch and 14 pints of Stella. I'm still very aware of my behaviour. When and by the time I am no longer aware, I am no longer conscious of my behaviour around what is a very harmful activity, the damage has been done. It's almost certainly far too late to address the problem. So whilst I believe, again, this is done in good faith and this is no criticism of the Gamble Aware organisation themselves, the messaging is potentially only going to reach people after the damage has already been done and after the gambling addiction demon has already got its teeth into you and you've already got to a place where it's not going to be as simple as simply abstaining from gambling in the future. Another one we hear often attached this one with online content, gambling content, streamers and, and such like is only gamble what you can afford to lose. Now, again, I'm not saying in this instance that the people who are uh, perpetuating and pushing this particular responsible gambling phrase are doing so with an uh, ulterior motive, but again, I'm not saying that they're not. Only gamble what you can afford to lose. Again, it sounds very, very sensible, doesn't it? Don't spend your rent money. Don't spend your council tax money. Don't spend what you need to actually eat for the rest of the month, so you're wishing the days away till the next payday. Very, very logical only gamble what you can afford to lose. Now take away one word from that slogan, one word which doesn't effectively change the meaning of the sentence, but certainly changes the connotations and the motives. Gamble what you can afford to lose. Take away the word only, and suddenly the sentence has a much darker and more sinister underlying tone. It's basically then expressing, spend your money on our service, spend your money betting with us or with whoever we are associated or affiliated with. Only gamble what you can afford to lose. Gamble what you can afford to lose. The only is kind of irrelevant in the statement. It is saying use your disposable income on this product, on this service. And if we gamble what we can afford to lose, i.e. all of our disposable income, and we are doing this consistently, this in of itself is a problem is a dangerous habit, is an unhealthy habit. Who do you know, or have you been in the situation where you don't buy new clothes, you don't buy new trainers, even though your old ones are falling apart? You don't go on holiday, you don't treat yourself or your family to luxury goods or even just nice days out because you've lost all the disposable income, all the money you could have spent on these nice items and nice experiences. You spent it all on gambling. It's money you could afford to lose. It didn't stop you from having a roof over your head or food on the table. 
but you've spent it on a product that has no discernible benefits to you or to those around you. Only gamble what you can afford to lose or gamble what you can afford to lose. So that brings me on to the one that we see attached to all the bookmaking adverts, all the online gambling promotion. When the fun stops, stop. Once again, on the surface this seems very sensible, very logical. We know that as gambling addicts, gambling is no longer fun for us and that is part of the reason we should stop alongside the horrendous financial and social and relationship damage it does as well as things like losing your career, losing your home and all the rest of it. Okay, we know that gambling has long since been fun for us as addicts, so the idea that when you are no longer enjoying the experience of gambling, that is the point at which you should stop, seems on paper to make sense. However, if you are at a point, or if you gamble up to a point where you are no longer enjoying the experience, you are no longer getting any benefit from it, i.e. there is no longer fun in gambling, then you are at a point where you have a problem and a bad relationship with gambling. You are, at the very least, a problem gambler, if not a full-blown gambling addict. So the simple instruction that, okay, I've recognised I am no longer enjoying this experience, it's not got any net benefit to me, in fact, it's a hell of a net negative, I'm you know, losing more money than I can afford, see point B, and it's causing me harm in my life, I should stop. If you think of the position that someone who's reached that point is in, are they just going to be able to stop? Well, speaking from experience, no. It is by then the addiction is set in and it simply isn't the straightforward case of just stopping that behaviour. You have to then go through a difficult but not insurmountable, dare I say, process of recovery. And by the time you get into recovery, you will have caused yourself substantial damage. Once again, this may not necessarily just be financial. You may have lost friends. You may have lost relationships, jobs. You may have been on the brink of having your house repossessed or being kicked out for not paying the rent. Yes, you've identified the fun stopped, but can you indeed stop? So whilst I don't suggest that in every instance these slogans, these phrases, this responsible gambling advice is meant with anything other than good intent. There could be an argument that this is done with some form of underlying ulterior motive, some form of malice. If you are providing a service by which people can gamble their money, spend their money with your business, with your company or with your affiliated company, and you can convince them to spend the money they can afford to lose, or you can convince them to keep gambling while they're having some semblance of fun, they're getting some enjoyment from the process of gambling, if you can convince them that's okay, then you can get them to spend as much money as they feasibly can before they develop a full-blown addiction, and then beyond because the process of recovery isn't always straight forward. It is also worth noting, of course, that the gambling companies that often use these slogans are indeed forced to do so. It also gives them a air of respectability, which I guess in some ways will help their public image, their PR, and may actually help generate additional business from people who may be new gamblers and see this company as a responsible gambling outfit. So, in summary, if you're encouraging people to gamble all the money they can afford to lose, and gamble consistently up until the point where the fun has stopped, then rather than being promoting, rather than you know, being a promoter of responsible gambling, you're actually pushing people to a point of addiction from which they are already then going to be an established customer, an established gambler, and one who is probably losing more than they can afford, spending more money with your business than they you know, should be spending on other things and have developed such an addiction that it won't simply be a case of stopping. I know I put a couple of caveats in this video, but I do just want to say that I'm not saying that everyone who gives out this advice is necessarily doing so with a dark, evil or ulterior motive, but it is important to consider the psychology behind this, where we're basically pushing people and telling them it is okay, it's not an issue, you don't have a problem up to the point where you're gambling the rent money 
or you're no longer getting any pleasure from it. Because if you reach either of those points, you're going to be in serious trouble and you're going to end up where I was. And um, on that note, have a lovely weekend, everyone. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Um, financial videos will continue again next week. Um, but uh, yeah, stay safe and stay